So you start a carnivore diet and you start getting a buildup of dental calculus or also known as tartar. It's that stuff when you go to the dentist, they have to use a tool like this and scrape on your teeth to scrape it off. That's dental calculus. And when some people start a carnivore diet, they see an increase in dental calculus. And what I want to talk about is, is, is this problematic? Is it a sign that something bad is going on? And what could be causing it and what to do about it? And I think where we have to start with here in this story is what is dental calculus? And so we have what is known as an oral microbiome. Basically, all these bacteria, of seven, eight hundred strands of unique bacteria in our mouth that play a very important role in oral health. Everything from protecting teeth from decay to producing nitric oxide, which is vital for vascular health. We have these bacteria that play a very important role in the mouth. And some people assume like we just need to use mouthwash, these antiseptics, kill all the bacteria out and we won't have decay. Well, while that may help decrease decay, it's not going to increase oral health. Okay, because these, these bacteria do play an important role. So we don't want to just sterilize the mouth. And what happens is we have these bacteria and We'll make a long story short. You have a tooth that something forms on the tooth known as a pellicle. We get this biofilm and bacteria start to attach to it. And what happens is when that gets mineralized via calcium and phosphate in our saliva, it turns hard, it turns into what we call as dental calculus. And just like we have kind of like I'll call good bacteria, a good, healthy, balanced bacteria that is not problematic. We can also have bad bacteria. And often this is dictated by most prominently diet. So, so with a poor diet, we can feed, I'll say the bad bacteria and they can become predominant and then they can lead to things like decay and periodontal disease. But with a good diet, we have a nice balanced ecosystem of bacteria uh, that help prevent decay uh, and help prevent periodontal disease. So just like we can have healthy plaque and bacteria, we can have unhealthy plaque and bacteria. We can have healthy calculus. We can have unhealthy calculus. So that's where I want to start. It's neither good nor bad, uh, but it's dependent on, you know, the levels of certain bacteria. Are, do, are path pathogenic ones predominant or do we have a nice balanced ecosystem? So to drive this point home, uh, I, I love dental archaeology, anthropology. And if we look at the anthropologic archaeological record, we can find this mandible that is dated to be 300,000 years old, basically the dawn of Homo sapien. And when we look at this mandible, what we see is there is dental calculus in between the teeth. However, there, none of the teeth have decay. All of them are straight. All 32 of them came in uh, straight, no decay. And so by all observations, this person had a very healthy mouth. Uh, however, they did have dental uh, calculus. And so this just highlights like you can have dental calculus and it's not ne necessarily pathogenic. Lastly, what I wanted to mention is even animals get dental calculus, both domesticated animals and wild animals. So this just goes more to show that dental calculus is not necessarily pathogenic. It is a natural, normal process, but it can be pathogenic and exacerbate issues if you are eating an improper diet. And a quick story, I had this patient in dental school. And I remember it so vividly. It was the first time he'd been to the dentist and he was in his 60s. And I opened his mouth and he had just calculus caked on his teeth. It took me several appointments just to get all the calculus off. But after hours of scraping and cleaning those teeth off, there was no decay, no periodontal disease. And while dental calculus is kind of a mystery in the fact that there's not general consensus on like why we need dental calculus, why we have dental calculus. If it's not pathogenic, what's its purpose? But I believe it actually can play a protective role as long as we have a, an appropriate diet. If we have an inappropriate diet, it can actually exacerbate periodontal disease. So it's not necessarily a pathogenic thing, uh, but it can be. Let's dive into the next thing. What can be causing an increase in calculus when we switch to a carnivore diet? Now, the first point to mention here is this is not a universal uh Thing that people experience when they switch switch to a carnivore diet. I would say just as many anecdotal case reports that I've heard from are people that switch to a carnivore diet and the amount of calculus buildup that they get dramatically decreases. Now there are the flip side of the story where when people go, go to a carnivore diet and they have a dramatic increase in calculus. So important to mention, this is not just some universal expectation. Uh, People have experienced different things. and I've gotten probably equal amount of anecdotes on both sides, but let's go through some of the things that can be causing this. The first thing, the most common thing is 
transitioning into a carnivore diet where the body's undergoing some pretty big fluid electrolyte mineral uh, balancing, okay? And so it can take time to find this new homeostasis. And this is the time period when I see most people experience an increase in dental calculus. And the most common story I hear is, you know, this increase in dental calculus happens for three, six months, uh, maybe their first dental visit where they go to get a cleaning. The hygienist is like, well, you got a lot of calculus. And then when they stick with it, the next one, there's like, it's dramatically less. That's the most common experience. Like it's an early thing, but then it, the body balances out. Besides the transition phase, there's several other things that uh, I, I've seen associations with. One is dairy. When people remove dairy, they tend to see a decrease in dental calculus as well. This is not universal. I've tested dairy in and out and it hasn't really seemed to impact my dental calculus, which is very mild buildup, but I do get some. Uh, I can talk more about that, but uh, so dairy is one of those things, if you are having a lot of buildup and you have a significant amount of dairy in your diet, you can try pulling that out. Same goes with coffee. Uh, coffee can lead to dry mouth, and I want to talk more about dry mouth, mouth here, uh, but coffee has something known as tannins in it, and tannins are a plant molecule. It's called the type of polyphenol, uh, and they help protect a plant from both harsh weather and predators but they bind up protein. And long story short is these tannins can uh, promote some calculus buildup as well. So try taking coffee out, try taking dairy out, see if that makes a difference. The next thing that ties in with transitioning is oxalates and oxalate dumping. Now I will tell you right up front, I am very skeptical of this, but uh, I'm open to the possibility that oxalates can potentially be increasing dental calculus. And these oxalates, uh, can bind the calcium and be deposited on tooth structure and help and potentially lead to increase in calculus deposits on your teeth. Like I said, I'm skept skeptical of this, but open to the possibility that that is one of the causes why some people may see an, an increase in dental calculus when they transition to a carnivore diet. The next thing that I think is worth evaluating is macronutrients and two interesting kind of research studies that I want to talk about here, one with protein, one with carbs. The research uh, done on protein in 1996 says since diets high in protein increase oral alkalinity this is associated with increases in dental calculus uh, and suggestive of a protein rich diet and what I find interesting is uh, researchers in 2000 on carbohydrates and dental calculus they said however high calculus rates have also been associated with high consumption of carbohydrates so basically both high protein diets and high carbohydrate diets can increase dental calculus, which I think kind of signals to us that maybe we need to increase our fat and decrease protein and or carbs if we're having issue with uh, dental calculus. And this kind of ties in closely with another theory of dental calculus, which has to do with calcium to phosphorus ratios. If you're only eating tons of red muscle meat, the amount of phosphorus uh, will be quite high and calcium will be lower. And there's an uh, association between maybe that can lead to dental calculus. Again, this kind of just I don't think that's a driving cause of dental calculus. However, it may be a signal that if we adjust our macros to more fat and a little bit less protein and little to no carbohydrates, perhaps that can help. So evaluate the macronutrients is something uh, you can do if you're still struggling with dental calculus. And the last thing I wanna look at is food toughness. What kinds of meat are you eating on your carnivore diet? Is it ground beef and eggs? Or are you eating more steaks that require more chewing? And there's some interesting studies that are that have done that have been done with regards to food toughness and dental calculus. Specific, specifically, ones done on lions and tigers. Ones fed ground meat versus the regular whole animal. The ones eating ground meat had an increase in dental calculus. They also had increase in craniofacial deformity. And beyond the scope of this video, but the, how chewing is so critical in the development of our jaws and our mandible, true for humans as well as other animals. So this to say, if you're just eating ground beef and eggs and you're not chewing a lot, that could be potentially why you're seeing a bit more calculus. Okay, let's talk prevention and about a couple of molecules you might find in toothpaste. Uh, the first one is known as pyrophosphate. You actually, this occurs naturally in your saliva, but it was first used by, I think it was Crest Tartar Control, and they put this 3.3% formulation into their toothpaste, their, their tartar control toothpaste, and it seemed to be moderately effective. And it binds calcium, and most of these anti-tartar 
ingredients they they bind calcium preventing it from being uptaken into the plaque and crystallizing the plaque uh, and so the other common one is known as sodium hexametaphosphate shmp it has several calcium binding sites works just like pyrophosphate the third ingredient that maybe you'll see are zinc salts like zinc chloride zinc citrate these don't really work very well the way that they're supposed to work is they replace calcium in the crystal which basically ruins the crystal formation uh, but they really have not been shown to be very effective so what's the take-home message here? And there's a few things. The first one is fear. If you have a good diet, some tartar buildup, calculus buildup is a normal natural thing and not something you need to be feared, okay? If you have a bad diet and you have a lot of tartar buildup, I would be afraid of that because that will help exacerbate the gingival disease, the gum disease, and can lead to periodontal disease. So that's the first thing. You don't really necessarily need to be afraid, okay? There are several things you can do. The first thing I recommend is patience. Most commonly, this is an adaptation symptoms symptom, and while while you, if you give it time, your body will likely find the proper calcium homeostasis where you may still have a little bit of calcium buildup like I, or excuse me, calculus buildup like I do. Like many other people naturally will have a little bit of calculus buildup, but it's not going to be pathogenic. The second thing is worth trying taking out some foods. Try going without dairy. Try going without coffee. See if that makes a difference difference the third thing is try different foods if you're eating mostly like soft softer meats like ground beef or eggs try incorporating more steak more chewing uh, the next thing you could look at is your macros try upping your fat uh, and decreasing protein that can go a long way the last thing that was worth mentioning is things that increase dry mouth can increase calculus buildup almost all med almost all prescription medications if you read like the side effects xerostomia which is dry mouth is one of them prescription medications tend to drive dry mouth which can exacerbate dental calculus buildup other things that drive dry mouth stress and anxiety these stimulate the sympathetic nervous system and when the sympathetic nervous system is uh stimulated the rest and digest the salivary flow which is it helps you digest that gets impeded okay so stress anxiety those things can impede salivary flow and increase dental calculus. Lastly, I want to mention mouth breathing. Uh, you want to keep your mouth closed besides when you're talking. So when you're sleeping, when you're at rest, when you're even when you're working out, mouth closed, breathe through your nose, tongue should rest on the palate, okay? Finally, toothbrush and toothpaste. Uh, I'm gonna make a whole video about this separately so uh i if it's i'll link it below like what do i recommend regarding toothbrush and toothpaste if it's not out yet go ahead hit subscribe and so you get notified when it's out thank you for watching and i will see you in the next video